according to the forest dwelling practices at Wat Nong Bap Hong. At about 4 p.m., the monks and novices stop doing tasks and gather for Nampana after they have done with their daily routine and monastic tasks. Pra Ajahn and the novices gathered at the water pavilion for Nampana. Then Pra Ajahn divided the novices into groups to clean the nearby areas. Pra Ajahn assigned some novices to clean the water pavilion. Others were assigned to clean the toilet, the food hall, and the pathway. The novices did a sitting meditation to relax before the evening chant that night. Yesterday, the novices focused attentively on the evening chant. The evening chant was conducted in a simple manner, following the forest dwelling monk's simple way of life. During the Dhamma story session last night, the novices learned a lesson of perseverance from the story of Mahachanaka through sand painting, accompanied by sand painting. Mahachanaka is one of the ten jatakas, which are the ten previous lives of the Buddha before he was born as Sitarata Gotama and later achieved enlightenment. This Jataka tale about perseverance was adapted for writing by the late King Pumipon Adulyadeid. Mahachanaka, the king of Mitila, had two sons. The first was Ari Tachanaka, who was brave and smart. And the second was Polachanaka, who was calm and compassionate. When the king passed away, the elder brother, Ari Tachanaka, became king, and the younger brother became his viceroy. After a while, a greedy minister made Ari Tachanaka suspicious of his brother by lying that Polachanaka would commit rebellion against him. So the king had Polachanaka put in jail. But with Polachanaka's merit, he was able to escape from jail and run away. After that, Polachanaka gathered his followers and conveyed a message to negotiate with the king. But the minister distorted it into a declaration of war. When the war started, Arita Chanaka urged his pregnant wife to escape. The king battled with his brother to the death.
the queen received help from a Brahmin. After a while, the queen gave birth to Mahachanaka. As he grew up, he learned various lessons and discovered the truth about his father. And so he intended to reclaim the throne. On his way, Mahachanaka narrowly escaped when a massive storm capsized his ship. He survived using his wisdom. He mixed uh, sugar and butter together and he drinks it all and he gets a cloth and put oil and he wrap around his waist and he jumped into the water where there are many big creatures like big big crabs and big all monsters and he just jumped over them threw over them and he starts swim Mahachanaka struggled to survive as he swam in the ocean for seven days until Manimekala, the goddess of the ocean, came to rescue him and carried him to Mithila. At that time, the kingdom of Mithila had no monarch. The ministers tried to search for a man worthy to be king by sending out a royal chariot. The chariot came to stop at a park where Mahachanaka lay sleeping. Mahachanaka was able to answer all the riddles that were put to him. And so he was granted the throne, married Sivali, and had a child with her. One day while Mahachanaka was walking in the garden, he spotted two mango trees. One was full of mangoes, while the other was barren. He tasted the fruit and was impressed by its flavor. Once he left the garden, the mango tree was ruined because many people also wanted to taste the fruit. When Mahachanaka heard what happened, he realized that the throne was like the fruit, in that it was wanted by many. So he abdicated the throne and gave it to his heir. When the story came to an end, Praajan allowed the novices to ask questions. Why did I have to put sugar and uh, sugar and butter? So he wouldn't get hungry <clears throat> because he had to swim for a long, long okay. period and he knew that he won't be going to find any coast near soon. Before the day ended, Praajan had the novices do a sitting meditation. Before long, Praajan had the novices switch to doing a standing meditation. before having them do a walking meditation in order to practice mindfulness. After the novices finished meditating, Praajan asked them which kind of meditation they preferred the most. DJ? Walking. Ati, what do you prefer standing walking? Three. You like three? Sitting. Sitting. Maybe tomorrow I can give you more sitting. The story of Mahachanaka's perseverance that the novices learned through the sand drawings last night reflected how the results of one efforts can overcome all sufferings. As the sermon states, Viriyena Dukamacheti, perseverance will lead to a freedom from suffering.
Another day of training had begun. The novices were still learning about the practices of the forest-dwelling monks at Wat Nong Pa Pong. They were learning to let go and sacrifice during this last week of Let Go. As this is the rainy season, the community near Wat Ba Sang Am is filled with rain and has a sleepy atmosphere. The novices perform their monastic tasks and met with the Buddhists who are waiting to offer alms as usual. Although this is a daily monastic routine, the atmosphere and the obstacles the novice face are different every day, and they help to discipline the novices be in a proper monastic manner. Monks go for alms rounds to receive food in order to relieve their starvation, so they can do their duties without trouble. It is also a way for the layman to make merit, eliminate their stinginess, and sacrifice their happiness for others. This routine is intended to keep a strong relationship between the household and the temple in order to preserve Buddhism. Though the novices had to walk on a dirty path, most of them remained calm as they held the bowls firmly. They continued walking and received offerings from Buddhist residents in the neighborhood, as well as those from different parts of Thailand who were waiting to offer alms. This was yet another lesson of let go for the novices to contemplate this morning. Many of the novices asked to assist Prajan after the alms round. Before breakfast, Luang Ta Aneg mentioned the activities that the novices will be doing during the Dhamma trip to Wat Nong Pa Pong and Wat Ba Na Cha. จุดหมายที่เราจะไปเข้าไปอนุสรณ์สถานก่อนอนุสรณ์สถานของหลวงปู่หลวงปู่ได้ทําความดีมาเป็นที่ยอมรับ
ของประชาชนหลังจากไปอนุสรสถานแล้วเราจะเข้าไปกราบเยดีแล้วก็จะได้เข้าไปกราบหลวงพ่อเจ้าคุณต่อ In addition, Luang Ta Aneg also preached a sermon to remind the novices of their monastic status. We are the ruler of the monastery, the son, the son, the son of the Lord. We have the ruler of the Lord, the Lord of the Lord, the Lord of the Lord, the Lord of the Lord. We will come from the house, from the church, from the language. ญาติโยมไม่ความสำคัญเท่าเทียมกันเอาอาหารอะไรอะไรมาเตรียมถวายเพื่อต้องการบุญเราอย่าทำให้ญาติโยมผิดหวังนะถ้าทำได้อย่างนี้หลวงพ่อก็ไม่ขาดทุนนะพวกญาติโยมทุกคนก็ไม่ขาดทุนว่าได้กำไรได้สร้างพระได้สร้างเนรได้สร้างบุคคลเข้าสู่ความงามต่างทางพระธรรมวินัยทางศาสนาเราก็ได้เป็นญาติพระพุทธเจ้าพุทธาญาติทำเหมือนที่พระพุทธเจ้าบอกทำมาญาติทำตามที่พระพุทธเจ้าวางไว้สังขาญาติปฏิบัติตามที่พระอริยเจ้าทั้งหลายประพฤติมาปฏิบัติมาอย่างไรเราก็ทำอย่างนั้นถ้าตั้งใจจริงๆนะหลวงพ่อว่าไม่ยากเลยขอให้เราตั้งใจเวลาก็เหลือไม่มากจะไปวัดป่านานาชาติก็เหมือนกันตั้งใจแล้วก็ทำตามสิ่งที่ครูบาอาจารย์ที่เป็นพระพี่เลี้ยงฉะนั้นให้พากันพูดง่ายสอนง่ายรับฟังตามง่าย After listening to Luang Ta Aneg's teaching, the novices thanked him and left to do their tasks. Then the novices spent a short time doing a sitting meditation to prepare themselves for the meal. In addition to the food that was provided, the laymen and laywomen also offered them noodles. Pra Ajahn asked about the amount of food each novice took this morning before allowing them to eat. Okay, listen. If you if you cannot finish the noodle, then take it back, bring it back now. Now you still have chance to bring it back the noodle. If you bring it back the noodle. The lay person can eat. Otherwise, you you not finish the noodle, you eat half the noodle, then the lay person cannot eat because you eat already half. Okay, if you not finish the noodle, uh, tomorrow no breakfast. Uh. <laughs> or uh, if one if one one of you not finish the noodle, then all oh, no breakfast. To step away from worldly pleasure, refrain from comfort, and to step into Buddhism, the novices had to overcome the inconveniences of the body and mind, adjust themselves to the vinaya and other rules, and practice intensely for many weeks. This afternoon, the novices had to practice outside. As they must learn how the forest-dwelling monks at Wat Nong Ba Pong live their lives.
After the meal, the novices wash their alms bowls. The youth are given opportunity to do tasks that suit their age and will help them learn self-dependence and teach them to have compassion for others. They will be proud of their actions and also learn to be responsible for their duties. The Dharma discussions between Praajan and the novices result in morals that are applicable for the novices' daily lives. The difference is I, I need to pay respect to you more than my mom and dad. That's not respect. You're just doing without respect. Respect is not just bowing. You have to have respect from inside. After cleaning the alms bowls, the novices gathered in the food hall. This morning was more special than usual, as I and Ben, former novices from True Little Monk Thailand Year 2, came to share their experiences of when they ordained. Came to share their experiences of when they were ordained. Before the session started, I and Ben paid respect and offered Nampana to Pra Ajahn. Then Pra Ajahn had I and Ben share their experiences. Pra Ajahn asked I and Ben to introduce themselves. Hey, my name is I. I've, um, I'm, I study in New Zealand. I went there for about um, four years now. And yeah, I, I was um, a little monk when I, five years ago. Hello, my name is Benjamin O'Neill. I study in England. I've just been doing computer science and like sports and stuff for a few years now. I was a little monk five years ago. Pra Ajahn let them share their ordination experiences with the novices. My experience was pretty nice and I, I find it really interesting being a little monk and I learn a lot from there. And my experience there was quite hard but I got through it so it was fine. I shared the experience of his ordination with the novices. I learned that um, you don't have to think that you can do it, you can just do it. Um, being a little monk is not easy, but when you get through it, it's really nice to know that you can always do it, no matter what. As I get more older and more, uh, less help, I, can, um, I learn more of um, how it works. Then Ben shared his experiences with the novices. I learned how to control myself more. So like, in ang uh, if I get angry in any situations, I can control my temper and calm down. And I've learned like, uh, yeah, I've learned self-control. So I can control myself like calmly in every situation. Like if I've gotten a hard exam, I can calm myself down to do it. Pra Ajahn asked I and Ben about the difficulties and challenges that they face during their ordination. We changed the things so I can read it better. Mm -hmm. So like we changed it into English so I can follow along with everyone else. Mm -hmm. But it was still quite hard because everyone was like speaking super fast so I couldn't mm -hmm. like keep up. I shared the difficulties and challenges that he faced with the novices. I know that one day I have to do it myself, like all myself. So yeah, it is a good thing to know how to do it yourself. They continued to share and discuss the experience of their ordination. When I came to me and he told me that he wanted to ordain again as a novice, I just told him that don't, don't ordain and stay in, in Bangkok so I can, can practice more and harder. So I invite I to Wat Pa Bun Rom, which is like in Ubonichitani. And why do you still like decide to, to be novice for the second year? Because um, 
I feel like it's quiet, it's nice and quiet because um, when I'm with my friend, I always mess around and stuff. But then when I go back to the temple, I, I feel like it's nice, it's calm, it's quiet. I can um, concentrate on things more. Pra Ajahn asked I and Ben what they had learned and how they had developed themselves after being ordained. Um, my um, school, um, my mm -hmm. school grade and stuff improved a lot after I go into a um, temple and when I even do my homework I finish it earlier because I can sit like still and concentrate more. I've learned to, I've talked about this like a few minutes ago but I've learned how to like control myself mm -hmm. so then, yeah. yeah in like hard situations. Then Pra Ajahn gave the novices an opportunity to ask about ordination experiences that they would like to know. How long do you meditate every day? I don't really uh, meditate, but I um, do some um, praying before bed yeah, and stuff. Was there any like disturb? Was there anything disturbing you while you were praying, or if you had a chance to meditate or something like that? Yeah, my little brother. He's really naughty. He always like gets his knife right? and shoots me. Yeah. Pra Ajahn asked Ben and I an extremely interesting question. So you both returned to New Zealand in England, which is not a Buddhist country. You, you live among like multicultural and mm -hmm. yeah, like diversity of cultures. How do you like? How do you stay? How do you live? How do you stay? And how do you like present? Or are there any of your friends who ask about like, meditation or Buddhism? They ask, sometimes they ask about um, how we pray and stuff. And some of them ask me and they're thinking about changing to Buddhist because they found it really interesting. And some of them ha have already changed to Buddhist. Uh, our school teaches like Buddhism and like Judaism and stuff like that. So like everyone knows what it's like. So it's kind of fine. Before leaving to prepare their requisites for the Dhamma trip this afternoon, Pra Ajahn let Ben and I give encouragement and advice to the novices. Try to find like, try to think of something you like and just keep thinking about so then you can calm yourself down and like, yeah. Yeah, try to think that you're doing it for someone because if you don't want to do it, it, it doesn't work. So you think that um, it's for something that you like. So, um, so for me, I, I like sports, so I think it will help sports, so I um, do it for sport. And if I love my mum, I just do it for my mum. And even though you're walking, you can just pray for her as you're walking. After the Dharma session concluded, Pra Ajahn had the novices thank Ben and I for sharing their experiences with them. Thank you for coming all the way to uh, Wat Pa Sengong and telling us about um, your life and also um, how many times you've been a mom and telling us about what you have done in New Zealand and all that other things. So thanks for coming from all the way from your country to come here to, to help us in our special training in Tudong and help us and give us like, not but not to give us energy when we're in this special training. Thank you for coming all this way just to talk to us and teach us all the things you did five years ago. It's fun being a monk, but you wake up very early and it's tiring too. But if you did it, everyone can do it. Sad. Sad. The monastic tasks which Pra Ajahn has trained the novices to do for many days were intended to prepare their bodies and minds for the Dhamma trip at Wat Nong Pa Pong and Wat Ba Nana Chat in just a few hours.
This afternoon was different from all the previous days. Because today the novices had the opportunity to go for their first Dhamma expedition to the 100-year memorial, the Pra Potinyana Terra Memorial, was established by faithful disciples of Ajahn Cha. The Pra Potinyana Terra Memorial was established by the faithful disciples of Ajahn Cha to celebrate the 100th anniversary of his birth and honor his meritorious contributions. Once Pra Ajahn and the novices arrived at the Pra Potinyana Terra 100 year memorial, Luang Ta Ane, one of Ajahn Cha's disciples, led the group to pay respect to the memorial. Then Luang Ta Anek explained the bas reliefs around the memorial, which illustrate Ajahn Cha's earlier life. This after having been ordained and learning the Dhamma, Ajahn Cha sought out a senior monk to teach him monastic principles. นี่เป็นหลวงปู่ชาลงไปหาหลวงปู่กินอลีไปหาครูบาอาจารย์ที่ศึกษาคอวัดปฏิบัติกําลังแสวงหาครูหาอาจารย์นี่ภาคขาด
this shady forest then became a Buddhist forest monastery. Ajahn Chah set strict monastic tasks for the monks at this temple, following the strict monastic routines in the Vinaya. The simple monastic routines of Wat Nong Ba Pong ignited faith in both Thai and foreign Buddhists. Therefore, the monastery has hundreds of branches in every part of Thailand, as well as foreign countries. Each branch follows strict routines that Ajahn Chah set for them. Amid the greenery of the forests surrounding Wat Nong Ba Pong, the novices had a chance to pay respect to Luang Bu Liam, the current abbot of Wat Nong Ba Pong. A novice representative offered an oblation and handmade toothwoods to Luang Bu Liam. Then Luang Bu Liam preached a sermon to the novices on their Dhamma expedition. เออในโอกาสมาท่านก็ให้ไปดูหลายพื้นที่เหมือนกันเอ่อไปดูพื้นที่นู่นพื้นที่นี่เพื่อเป็นส่วนประกอบของความรู้เราจะได้เอาไป
and follow the novices' Dharma expedition at Wat Ba Nanachat, Warin Chamrap district, Ubon Rachatani, on the 19th to 21st of July, 2018. Please follow the summary of daily routines tomorrow at 9 o'clock p.m. Follow our worldwide streaming on www.truelittlemonk.com and Facebook, True Little Monk. The dual language broadcast is available on True Visions channels 60 and 99 and True Visions HD channels 119 and 333 and True Blue Banya channel. The dual language live broadcast is accessible 24 hours a day on the True ID and True Blue Banya applications. All episodes of the Daily Reel documentary of True Little Monk are available on YouTube.